Dark Souls is a game that doesn't waste any part of its experience. The story of the game is told through everything, from the environments to the enemy designs to the loading screens. The game's systems for leveling up, currency, and punishment for death all use the same resource. Even the layout of the game's world is structured in such a way that you're constantly retreading old ground. The music is consistent with this philosophy. Rarely do we hear elaborate intros or static background music. In fact, we rarely hear background music at all. When there is music, though, it takes a small number of musical elements and makes the most of them. Today, I want to talk about how to take a few musical ideas and turn them into a larger piece. I'm sure I've mentioned these before, but here's a quick overview for newcomers. In music, the term motif refers to the smallest possible musical idea that can still be recognized as a unique idea. Motifs are a fundamental building block composers use to construct pieces that sound completely coherent without being repetitive, as the ear can latch onto recurring motivic figures that emphasizes a piece's identity even as they evolve throughout the piece. Furthermore, if you know how to manipulate a small motif into a larger musical idea, it makes the composition process much less rage-inducing. For an example, let's look at Gwyn, Lord of Cinder, the music that plays during the final boss fight in Dark Souls. If that weren't enough of a hint, there are going to be spoilers for the final boss fight in Dark Souls, just so you know. This theme is surprising, to say the least. On a soundtrack full of pounding orchestral boss fight music, you'd expect the grand finale to be the poundiest of all. Instead, we get this delicate piano piece, which evokes less pulse-pounding action and more crushing loneliness. It's a beautiful piece, which adds a lot to the Dark Souls narrative in itself, with its implication of the tone of this last boss battle. But who cares about narrative? I want to talk about motifs! Uh-huh... <clears throat> the piece is two and a half minutes long, but it's really built out of two small melodic motifs. It can be a little overwhelming trying to write even one minute of music from scratch, but if you know how to effectively elaborate on a musical idea, you can get away with writing 15 seconds of music and stretching it out however long it needs to be. A key element in this process is structuring the song as a whole. As I'm sure you know, any piece of music is going to be made up of different sections like verses or choruses or what have you. We can break Gwyn's theme down into three main sections, which I'll call A, B, and C. Phrase A is a simple elaboration on our first three-note motif, 5-4-1. This isn't exactly a revolutionary melodic idea, it's basically just one note different from a 5-1, to one, but the rhythm keeps things interesting by keeping beat 1 completely empty. So how does this three-note motif get stretched into a full 8-bar phrase? One way to do it is to state it as a melodic idea and then state a variation of that idea. It doesn't have to be anything complicated, in fact, you don't have to change very much at all. Instead of this fourth leap down to one in the motif, we invert it to get a fourth leap up to the flat seven in the variation. This extends the phrase in a very natural way. To finish off the phrase, we get this walk down back to the E where we started, and then the last three bars are kept empty. Motui Sakuraba, the composer for Dark Souls, could have handled this a few different ways. He could have repeated the first motif and ended on the one. But that feels too final and loses momentum. He could have maybe used another variation of his motif to extend the phrase even longer while still landing on the fifth. but this would have filled up the rest of the eight bars. The fact that he kept half of the phrase melodically empty was a careful decision that I think serves two purposes. First, keeping the melody sparse serves to emphasize the loneliness and isolation of the subject, Gwyn. Gwyn was once a powerful god, but it has been thousands of years since he gave up his soul to rekindle the first flame, and what we see when we meet Gwyn in the game is an empty husk of his former glory, desperately trying to hold the coming age of darkness at bay just a little longer. This boss fight isn't supposed to feel like an epic finale so much as like putting down an old sick dog. Lore? More like boar! Let's get back to music theory! Okay. This open space leaves lots of room for further variations to expand upon the melody later in the song, and we see Sakuraba capitalize on this towards the end of the piece. Phrase B is twice as long as phrase A at 16 bars, and is based off of our second three-note motif. 
This phrase is a little less straightforward with how it uses its motif, as we start with this pickup note emphasizing our fifth, E, before this three note walk up plays out. Now that we've heard our second motif, it's time for the variation. Instead of walking up the scale, once again the line is inverted from the original, walking down to the second, B. Ending on the second allows the piece to keep the same sense of unrest and forward momentum as ending on the fifth, because they're both chord tones of our dominant chord, and they don't feel totally resolved. Another interesting aspect of this variation is the lack of beat one, an element clearly taken from our original motif back in the A section. Blending established motifs together like this does a lot to make a piece feel more cohesive. The rest of the first eight bars are left empty, again like phrase A, but with the second eight bars we get to see a very common melodic structure. We start with our regular B motif, but then afterwards get another new variation. Instead of walking down to the second, we jump up to the root, giving the B section as a whole this A, B, A, C call and response structure. You'll notice that this interval of an upwards fourth is an inverse of the downwards fourth we had in the first half. Sound familiar? Limiting the number of musical ideas you use to write a piece is a really good way of focusing the music, even when you're writing variations on your established motifs. This is also the first time Sakuraba starts to play around in all that space he's left himself. We get a variation on a variation, if you will, as this walk down to B is transposed up to bring us back down to our fifth E. So here we have our phrase A and our phrase B. These two phrases are given to us in an A-A-B-A -A -A structure. This is a pretty common structure for musical phrases, sections, or entire pieces, and should be a part of any serious composer's vocabulary. By using this structure, these two sections get us just over a minute of music, but at this point we risk boring the listener if we don't give them something new. Here's where we bring in the C section. It's kind of hard to tell at first listen, but this melody is actually just another variation on our second motif, stretched out into dotted half notes and transposed down a fourth. Stretching out a previous melodic idea into longer note values like this is called augmentation. It's really interesting to hear what it would sound like if Sakuraba had used his first motif for the bridge instead of his second. It just doesn't quite work as well, probably because ascending motion is much better for building tension, which is our goal at this point in the piece. This is also the very first time in the piece that Sakuraba moves away from the tonic A minor chord. Over this section we get a minor 5 chord moving to a minor 4-6 chord. You'll notice that this mirrors our very first motif's 5-4-1 movement. Coincidence? Maybe. I mean, it's a really common harmonic movement, but who knows? It's also worth noting that the C section is set up the same way as our B section, with a motif, variation, motif, new variation structure. The only difference here is that each variation is pretty simple, only adding a few extra notes at the very end of the phrase. It's little changes like that that keep the music from being repetitive. This one bar motif got stretched to four bars, and the four bars got stretched into 16. This is what I mean by getting the most out of your ideas. Now at this point in the piece we get an eight bar transition section. It's a cluster chord that gradually builds tension with this dissonant major seventh interval. We're out of the relative somberness of the C section and building intensity towards the piece's climax. After the transition, it's time to kick the piece into high gear. We move back into the B section, only this time forgoing the driving eighth note accompaniment we saw before for the type of cluster chords we saw introduced in that transition section. 
The phrase is also altered a little bit. Our move to the B in the fifth bar is delayed, and in the second half of the phrase, instead of walking back down from this high A, the melody builds right into it and sticks there, building the intensity going into the next section. The harmony, descending from flat 7 to flat 6 at this point, gives us a little extra momentum. The next section is the climax of the whole piece, a combination of all of the ideas we've been introduced to so far. We get 8 bars of the A section's melody with an additional 3 bars based off of our first motif moved up a step, filling out the empty space. Next we get the first 4 bars of phrase B repeated, all of this over a minor 5 to minor 4 progression taken from phrase C. Notice how we switch from the pounding cluster chords of the transition section back to our driving eighth note accompaniment from the beginning. This last phrase kind of sputters to a stop, slowing down to try and catch its breath before trying and failing to start back up again. This reinforces the utterly unheroic death of our Lord of Cinder, who desperately fought to delay his inevitable demise, only for his flame to finally sputter out at your hand. Hey! Who do you think you are, Vadi Vidya? Cut it out! Okay, that's enough of you. <laughs> After the music slows down, we go into an entirely new, restrained 8-bar transition section that leads us back to the beginning. So, to ridiculously oversimplify this piece, we have two main three-note motifs, split into three sections as well as two eight-bar transition sections. It's ridiculously hard to write two and a half minutes of good music, but it's significantly easier to write a three-note motif, and writing an eight-bar section based on a motif isn't too bad. And if you know different ways to structure eight-bar sections into a song, you all of a sudden can turn a little bit of writing into a lot of music. Just don't forget that the emotional core of a piece is much, much more important than the structure in terms of writing something that people will connect with. Well, I hope that was helpful or interesting or maybe even both. If you liked what you saw and want to support it, consider checking out my Patreon page. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below or hit me up on Twitter at 8BitMusicTheory. Thanks so much to my patrons for all the support and thanks so much to all of you for watching and I'll see you around. Hey, how do you think you are, Manny Vidya? Cut it out.